Hello everybody, it's Erin from Me Papery and welcome back to the channel. Um, I am working today on finishing up my crazy quilt cover. And I think I, what I might do actually is sell this as a naked journal. Um, well, halfway's naked journal with possibly some ephemera because I remember how I mentioned before, like it's kind of looking scraptastic because I was using up some scraps um, to make a bunch of ephemera. So I'll go through that in a minute, but um, actually I'll go through that right now. Let me set that stuff aside. So every January um, after the holidays, I like to do some reorganization and this is my big my big bin this is i think i don't know 13 by 13 or 14 by 14 by it's a cube uh, but it's bigger than your standard 12 by 12 cube and this was mounded full i also had a second cube which had a bunch of paper in it and you'll still and you'll see i still have a bunch of scraps in here um so what I really wanted to do was go through, use up a bunch of stuff or, or process it. So the first thing I did was I took out all of the big pieces of scraps and I cut those into card sizes um, so that those were ready to go and, and use for scraps. The next thing I did was I grabbed a bunch of junk mail um, envelopes and cards and things like that that I had out here in my ephemera holder um, that has just been kind of sitting out there waiting for me to use. And I went through and I made as many pieces of ephemera as I could out of, out of everything. And while I was doing that, I was also kind of mining for gold <laughs> within my scrap bucket. Um, so uh, I was in the habit of keeping like every little scrap because darn darn you Corey Dahman you had me had me convinced that I, I needed to keep every little scrap well I don't need to keep every scrap there were a lot of things I was keeping that at the end of the day you know um, keep a few but get rid of get rid of the most so I went mining for gold in my scraps and I got rid of a paper bag full a large like grocery size paper bag full of scraps that were um, things that I really was not going to use or I had so much of it and it and it was not that awesome that I was not going to use so I kept things that were a really nice quality paper um, had a color or a print or something wonderful on them or were a really great texture um, on them and or were large enough to do something with um, but if they were interesting enough even if it was a tiny piece I may have kept it so I still got a bunch left um, but I did make quite a few quite a few things so this is my box of all of the things I did so I thought I would just do kind of a a flip through um, some of these things I like I really didn't do anything to them because they were already pieces that were like cut out of a digital that just kind of got tossed in there um, you know like these things were like bingo cards you know big whoop but other things like you know I spent some t some time collaging um, some belly band type pieces or pieces that I could cut up I spent some time um, covering some pieces with book page and napkin ready to go for some journal cards and tags um, I made some corner pockets um, I made a you know a matchbook style cover I did uh, let's see this one's a pocket um, that needs to be sewn like and nothing's been sewn yet um, but oh, that's a pocket a larger pocket um this is kind of a 
billfold style thing. You know, that's just a card that's, you know, but I just, I spent the time and did, did the work to do the paper collaging pieces. So all that's left to be done is decorations, um, folding, uh, folding, sewing, <laughs> lots of little ha double corner pockets there. Um, but you'll notice that I was able to even, you know, this piece was like, I punched out a bunch of um, one inch circles and this was like the negative space. Well, I used that um, as an accent in the, in the spaces to create some interest. And actually there's some pieces, I'm gonna dig for those here. Yeah, some of these collage pieces where that's, you know, it's those pieces, it's the little strips um, and things that really added a lot of interest um, and made those collages something interesting to look at. Um, where if I weren't using up those scraps, you know, it may not have been as cool. So I think this is a, a fun exercise um, to do. I think it's something I'm going to make a part of my yearly process just to, you know, definitely go through, um, go through and get some stuff made. It was a great mass making, like, look at this big, this one I've got ready to make into a folio um, with some extra, I've got some extra pockets and stuff made. That one's ready to be sewn up um, and then decorated. but. It's a great way to get a bunch of ephemera made up and ready to go, a bunch of pockets um, and everything. So you're going to see, you're going to see this stuff make, oh, look at this one, make appearances in my journals. Um, this was, I had a gift bag that I had cut the bottom off of to make like a secret treasure spot. So I had the rest of that gift bag um, in scraps to use. So I had enough um, to make this, um, like a double pocket and the card to go in the pocket and then an extra, you know, like a little bookmark, um, piece ready to go in a set. So this was a piece of old newspaper. This was an ad for a, a lady's shop that was running a sale on sweaters back in the eighties. Um, here's another piece where I used a lot of you know, scraps from where I had punched stuff out. Um, and I really, I really kind of like the way these turned out. These um, are really pretty. So, um, you know, I'm probably going to, when I finish this crazy quilt um, cover, I'm going to take a selection of these items and create a journal from them, finish sewing them up, um, and put together a journal. I probably won't do a whole lot of decorating um, so that the person who receives it can do that part, um, but I think that would be a fun a fun thing to do with this, with all this ephemera that I made from my scraps. Um, I didn't even count the pieces, but there is a lot. There's a lot here, there's, you know, so what am I gonna do with the rest of my scraps? Um, I am going to see what I can do die cuts um, from, and then I'm gonna see what I can make punches out of, and then I'll see what, you know, probably use some in mixed media collages and stuff, but uh, yeah. So that's, I'm just gonna keep trying to use, use up stuff. Um, I don't like to create a whole lot of waste and I don't like to break into my new stuff until I've used up my old stuff. So scrappy, scrappy stuff. So the cover, let's get started on that. So here is the crazy quilt cover um, as it sits right now. So I did go ahead and do the sewing off camera. Here it is, here it is, the right way around. Um, had some extra pieces of lace and trim and everything that I put on there. Um, so I did the sewing, I used olive green, um, 
deciding that that stood out enough but also blended in enough um, and I liked the way it looked. I did trim around the edges with pinking shears just to add a little bit of interest. Hindsight, I wish I would have waited till I put the lining in, but we're always learning lessons. <laughs> so this is what it looks like for now on the inside. Now I could leave it like this. Um, it's kind of got a cool effect with, you know, the sewing things. Um, I could just gesso it um, on the inside if I didn't want this craft. Um, look and I still wanted those seams but I did decide that what I would like to do is put a lining in it so I selected this fabric which is one of the fabrics that I used on on the front here's a piece of it here um, and then there's one at least two pieces on the back um, so it does make an appearance on the front cover this was I believe a set of bed sheets <laughs> at one point. So I'm going to use this on the interior to do the lining. Um, I had selected this fabric that I knew I wanted to do at least one pocket out of. Um, and so I'm gonna do a pocket on the back cover out of this. And then I have a whole bunch of these things that I picked up at a garage sale that um, the lady who was hosting the sale was a quilter and a crafter and she had a bunch of these all bagged up and so I have a ton of these and they're all from pairs of jeans and she had cut the pockets out um, and finished everything off nicely and with the liner um, on them and she's got buttonhole buttonholes on the top of them so I'm not sure what type of project this might have been for um, maybe one of you knows if you're in quilting circles or sewing circles um, you might know what this might have been intended for um, but I can think of all kinds of ideas uh, to use with this but what I thought I would do is take a strip of this fabric to coordinate um, and create a belly band on top so I cut this strip narrow enough to go through these buttonholes and just long enough that it's wider than the length between the buttonholes but not, not longer than the edge of the pocket. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is feed the strap through here and then sew it and or glue it I'm not sure which yet but probably uh, I don't know but anyway it'll be it'll be fastened down so it'll be a belly band here but then a pocket here but then it'll also be just kind of a flip um, so I thought that would be a cute way to use that I thought about putting buttons there but then that would add bulk. And this was a nice way of being able to bring this fabric to the front and add some interest up here um, without adding a whole bunch of bulk. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. <laughs> um, Oh, look back here if I do sew that am I gonna you know what if I do and I make it it makes something awful looking I can just add some decorations I suppose or something but I'm I'm I don't know why I'm feeling like I don't trust Fabri-Tac but I don't know So what I'm going to do is take my glue stick and do just the one side of the cover first because glue stick dries pretty quickly and I, I want it to be goopy enough yet to kind of 
stick this fabric. So I'm gonna start from the center, lay it on there, start from the center and just kinda rub my hands outward to smooth that fabric over the cover. And then I'm gonna fold this piece over, pull it back just a little bit. And put the glue on this side. This does really chew up your glue stick. Um, and this is my last glue stick, so hopefully it lasts me today. I've got some more ordered. Um, but these are really, really reasonably priced, these Avery ones, so I don't mind so much because um, they're not as expensive as some other ones I could be using. Um, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper and less fussy than using Fabri-Tac for these large surface areas. If you're gonna sew around the edge, you don't need Fabri-Tac um, for the whole thing. You really just wanna kind of get that smoothed over. All right. Looks, looks good. Shoot, 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 shoot. I forgot to bring my, I ran out of olive green thread and I forgot to bring my new spools down. So I am gonna to have to turn this off and come back with my thread so I can do the sewing. Okay, so I went and got my thread and I have gone ahead and attached the belly band with pocket, uh, pocket <laughs> flip. Um, take the sticker off here. It was a pair of big girls skinny straight jeans in sweet pink. <laughs> in case anybody wanted to know. Um, and sewn around the edge of the cover. Um, so now what I'm going to do is very carefully trim the edges um, to with the pinking shears to match. Sorry, I forgot to put my mic on. To match the um, side of the cover. So hopefully, I mean, it might not, it probably won't. I mean, let's just be honest. I'll probably won't get this to match up, but it might look kind of cool like having a double pinked edge. Um, oh, she's playing with her toys over there. I'm dog sitting Holly today. Holly is a, how old is she? 10 years old, I think. 10 years old Shih Tzu. Um, and Holly has a lot of anxiety, separation anxiety. And um, we did not have the greatest first day together. But today is our third day together and we are doing much better um, today. So it's been much more enjoyable for us to be together, which is great because she is going to be one of my regulars. Um, I'm going to have her Monday through Friday every other week um, for a full day of daycare. Yeah. So um, just so much glad that she's so glad that she's settling in here. And so she doesn't like being down here in the studio so much. She was curious about it and she likes to come down here and check things out. But when Auntie Erin comes down here to work, it's not very fun for her, she thinks. So um, she would rather that I were upstairs um, 
snuggling on the couch, I think. So, but we had, she had some fun out in the backyard a little earlier, so she had some time outside. That was nice. we go so yeah it doesn't exactly match up but I think that kind of for me anyway I mean you can let me know in the comments what you think but for me anyway this just kind of adds a little something um, having that lining peek out a little bit and not be quite cut the same um, as the cover and it, it just adds like a little bit of depth, a little bit of extra texture, and a little bit of extra whimsy to this cover. So, so there we go. Yeah, that was on the right way. <laughs> like, watch me, watch me do this backwards and upside down, right? <laughs> so that turned out really cute. So now I wanted to do a pocket um, for this side. Um, and this, this piece of fabric was a uh, upholstery sample. So it's got this glue over here from where it was glued into the book. Um, so I won't be using that piece. But um, after doing some measuring earlier, I decided that something um, about five by four would work really well over here. So um, this fabric is thick enough and it's got this paper backing over on this side. I wouldn't have to back it with paper. Um, the reason I'm doing it um, is because I don't have a large area to have a cutting mat and to be able to use my, um, my rotary cutter right now. I'm going to try and clear off some space so I can lay down my mat um, so you guys have a nicer surface to look at uh, for videos. But for today, um, I'm going to back this with just scrap piece of book page um, make sure there's nothing funky on that corner okay um, for thinner fabrics I use scrap cardstock um, or manila to back my pockets with it just gives them some extra oomph and help stabilize that fabric. So I am going to cheat that all the way up into that corner just so that those the little zigzags from the pinking are showing. Um, but nothing else. And then that is going to be my guide. Um, to cut this pocket out. So and you'll have to excuse me if the angle's not great. You know, that's what I get for being left-handed. And this will help ensure that I get nice straight lines. Well, or as straight as I'm going to get them anyway. Um, out of this piece. go back in the scrap bin and I'm feeling like maybe it needs like a little bit of like some trim or something on it though it's kind of plain so let me see what I've got here um, or some lace maybe and it's so colorful, I think I'm gonna go neutral. Let's see here. Oh, this might be kind of fun. Let's see what this would look like if it's too bulky. See, covers I feel like you can go just a little bit bulkier. Take that tag off of it. Ooh, that's kind of cute. 
Do we like it down a little bit? Or should I put it up at the top? Let's see. Better one or better two? I think I like it down just a little bit. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So. Just gonna put just the tiniest little, teeny tiniest little bead of Fabri-Tac there, because I probably will. Sew this too, but we'll see. We'll see, maybe I'll trust the Fabri-Tac. So then, no, I'm gonna want to give this a clean edge. There we go. And stick that down. And work that across. And trim to size perfectly. Okay. And get the rest of that rolled back up. How cute is that? Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. So I... I know it feels like I should put this pocket up there, but really once you get the pages in, who's gonna know if it's down here, right? I mean, I feel like I wanna give people as much height as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew around the edges of this and then I'm just gonna glue that pocket on. Um, so be right back. Okay, so I have just gone and sewn um, just around the edges there. Um, since I got these two edges and there's Fabri-Tac in here, I decided I'm not gonna worry about sewing across the, the top there. So I am gonna use Fabri-Tac, um, or you could use hot glue to um, adhere this, but I don't have my hot glue gun heating up right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Fabri-Tac this sucker. So flip her down and just get a nice bead going here so what are you guys how are you guys thinking this uh, crazy quilt journal cover turned out I think it turned out really cute and I think I will be doing this technique again um, but you let me know in the comments what do you think are you going to try this out have you seen this before um, let me know I love the crunchy sound from that packing envelope too that's really nice but you could just as easily use quilt batting um, in there if you didn't want that that sound so and I'll just tap that into place there we go How are you doing, Holly? You're just being so good. So good. There we go. Yay. Okay, Aaron, let it set. 
<laughs> Let it set. All right. There we go. So that is the cover finished. Um, so one more thing to show you before I go. I did make another cover the other day while I was working here in studio. So I thought I would let you see that. Um, this one is kind of a, you know, woodsy, camping, um, outdoorsy inspired cover. And it has got two double pockets on the interior that are decorated with um, cutouts from the cover fabric. So this one will be going up in the shop very soon. This would coordinate absolutely beautifully with our Northwoods digital uh, kit. So keep that in mind if you are the one to purchase this beauty. Um, that would be a great a uh, great digital kit for a journal for this. So, um, so anyway, head to the shop uh, within the next couple of days, I suppose, to get a look at this one. So, all right, everybody, that is it for me today. So I will see you soon and have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs>